Mallory, let's go to the hotline. Let's go down Austin Way. We are pleased to be joined by the host of the Craig Way Show on AM 1300 Zone in Austin. We are pleased to be joined by the co-host of High School School Board Live on Valley Sports Southwest and the voice of the Texas Longhorns, our friend Craig Way. Mr. Way, how does today find you? Uh, it finds me rolling along I-35. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's funny that you talk about the games that you're talking about. I have one tonight. I'm actually doing for television uh, between A&M Consolidated and Hendrickson. That's a good and it, Yeah, yeah. And it got me to thinking. It got me to thinking. When you make picks, mm-hmm. do you have a more difficult time picking games on a weekend where there's a relative dearth of quality matchups mm-hmm. or or it, does it come easier to you? I think that weekends like this – uh, where it is a slower weekend across the state, just generally from a from a top top upper crust perspective, I I relish these opportunities only because I think it gives us an opportunity to talk about games that otherwise might be buried. Like for example, we got to pick Junction and Brackettville this week. That might not have made the picks in other weeks, but it does this week, and so it gives us an opportunity I think to spread the love a little bit and to spotlight a game, uh, you know, uh, like Shiner and Fall City, which is a huge game. Uh, you know, even though they've got, you know, five combined losses. So I, I don't know. I, I feel like I like next week's spoiler week nine is loaded. We're back to it. But I think I think weeks like this are, are fun from a from a different perspective. It may be a little bit more challenging. Well, not only that, I think also um, it, it gives us a chance also to perhaps I don't want to say disregard uh, early season losses mm-hmm. because they do factor in but unlike college football they are non-district losses so a shiner situation and and uh, like you said between shiner and fall city five losses between them hey the 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 thrust of it mainly is on the non-district portion of the season so we're more easily able to compartmentalize those games and how it shapes a team's run Mm -hmm. through tough district competition and i think you're spot on on that okay before we get to high school football i want to ask you a little bit about uh your other gig which is which is uh for the the, the small football club in, in in austin coming off of a big win last week over oklahoma at the cotton bowl um and i want I, I, I have a take that i'm working on and i want to i want to kind of have you try it on for size i am of the opinion and i i recognize that we're just two years removed from 49 nothing i i can't help but watching that game feeling as if that was at least among the most dominant performances we have seen in a Red River game, even if it doesn't show up on the scoreboard. It wasn't 100 to nothing, but man, it, it, it really felt like it during, a, during large swaths of that game, especially starting about the middle of the third quarter. Well, I, I think you have a really good point. Here's the weird thing about that, Deb. You, uh, and, and Oklahoma fans will smile when I say this kind of thing. You can take those kinds of performances over the last 25 years and count them on one hand from the Texas side. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma years ago could, you know, put a parcel of them together. I mean, listen, there's a lot of PTSD in Austin from 63-14 in 2000, 65-13 in uh, 2003. 55 to 17, mm-hmm. 63, 21. Anyway, I could go on and on. There were, there were several. But the nice thing about this is those seem well in the rearview mirror. Even the recent Oklahoma wins have been close ones. And Texas has had a couple of close ones. But then, to your point, they've had a couple of blowouts. Does it uh, mean a shifting of uh, you know tectonic plates in the Red River rivalry? I don't know. But I do know this. Clearly, uh, Texas had the better team this year and improved it on the field Saturday, which merely sets up the prelude for this thing going on down here this week. That's, a, that's an excellent segue to my next question uh, about, of course, the Georgia Bulldogs, the fifth-ranked team in the nation, come calling to Austin to take on the number one Texas Longhorns this week. Uh, and, and I'm going to have you fill in the blank here, which I know you often have me do on your show sometimes. You fill in the blank. This is the biggest game at DKR since... Well, uh, the hype would say 2015 when Notre Dame came in. But both of those teams, both Texas and Notre Dame that year, proved to be, you know, less than stout. 
So in terms of teams that are capable of getting to the finish line and perhaps playing for, if not winning a national championship, it's the biggest one in Austin since 2006 Mm -hmm. when Ohio State came in number one, had Troy Smith. Texas was a defending national champion. You had uh, Colt McCoy as a redshirt freshman. And the Buckeyes largely dominated that game. They won 24 to 7. So in terms of the, the big time matchup, uh, those, then then I would say then then probably 2006. But I remember the hype train uh, really rolling into that 2015 matchup. Yeah, that, that is that is very, very true. All right. So it's Craig Way, the Texas High School Hall of Famer, joining us here. Texas football today. Get involved in the conversation. Hashtag TF today. So you are on the call tonight for AM Consolidated and Pflugerville Hendrickson. Um, when when you all kind of take a question you asked me earlier and kind of uh, turn it back on you. When you take a look at this week eight slate of games, I can't help but feel like, again, that upper crust of games maybe isn't quite there. But haven't we seen in the past few years that it's the quote unquote quiet weeks that end us end up with with you running into the the Bally Sports Southwest studios uh, and saying, "Man, did you see this? Did you see that?" It, it, isn't it always the slow weeks that end up surprising us? You know what, Mallory in her dating background could say it's always the quiet ones. You know, <laughs> that all of a sudden, you, to, you know, it's that that kind of thing. And I will also add that it, you know it's kind of like baking a pie. If you don't bake it long enough, that crust is a little doughy and it's and there's not enough but if you make it long enough and there's some things beneath the crust kind of like the nasa mission to jupiter where they're trying mm-hmm. to see what's under the crust of all that ice in an ocean i think there's an ocean under there somewhere for these games this week we just kind of have to root around and find it uh is it fair to say that the biggest game in your neck of the woods is going on in Dripping Springs tomorrow night when Dripping Springs hosts Lake Travis? I ask only because I have a friend. I think, isn't there an F, is the F1 race this weekend as well? Oh, gosh. I, I dare you. I dare you to have to find a hotel room in this town. Be- because. Uh, and, and, and the ones that are there are no less than five or $6,000 for a night. Because the reason I ask is I had a friend who's, co- I think, coming in for the F1 race, and they asked me, they're like, hey, what's a game? I want to go to a Texas high school football game. And I said, well, hey, great news. You can go to Dripping Springs and watch Lake Travis and, and, and Dripping Springs. Is there another Austin game I'm missing, or is this the, the game of the week down there in the ATX? That, that that's that's the headliner that's the headline there's a couple other ones you know you and aaron hardigan have kind of uh you know nudged me on this are, are we going to see some 25 6 a chaos maybe we'll know more this week after the battle for the bell between round rock and westwood and kind of a uh a, a, a elimination game in terms of playoff possibilities for vista ridge and cedar ridge as they play but the headliner clearly uh, is is going to be Lake Travis and Dripping Springs, other than maybe Eastside Memorial against Northeast, right? Hey, hey, Eastside Memorial, two wins in the win column, uh, looking uh, looking pretty good. All right, all right. I'll just keep an eye. Uh, things are getting <laughs> it's turned. It's a story. Around. It's a story. <laughs> all right, Craig, it's the meanest thing we do to each other each week. I'm going to give you three games. You can only teleport to one, and I'm not going to give you the easy out of Dripping Springs and Lake Travis. You can either teleport to Lavaca County and watch Shiner and Fall City. You can teleport to Katie for Katie and Katie Jordan, or you can teleport to Max Goldsmith Stadium in Louisville to watch the undefeated Coppell Cowboys take on the Louisville Fighting Farmers. Which which place are you teleporting to? Well, two of those games, the two 6A games, are prove-it-to-me games, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, can, can Katie Jordan prove it against Katie? Can Louisville, I can't believe I'm saying this, can Louisville prove it to Coppell <laughs> that, 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 they're, that they're belonging? Yeah, I know. I know where you graduated. So there, there's, <laughs> those are prove it to be games, and it would be interesting to see how they turn out. But I'm also interested to see the progress that Shiner and Fall City have made heading into this matchup, which brings us full circle back to the whole point about shaking off the early season doldrums and rounding yourself in the playoff shape. And that's why I would probably go Shiner Falls City. How about to uh, to Memphis to watch North Texas take on Memphis? Oh, here we go. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, the disappointing thing about that, Mal, it kicks off the same time as Texas, Georgia. So what that means is 
not that that's ever stopped me from having <laughs> a, a laptop, an iPad, and other televisions on in the in the booth. Tep has seen pictures of this. We have at times four other games on monitors and laptops and iPads going on simultaneously. Thing is kind of important. So we'll kind of zero in on that one, but we'll have the other games on just so we can keep track. I love that answer. <laughs> he's Craig Way. He's a Texas High School Hall of Famer. You can hear him on the Craig Way uh, Show on AM 1300 The Zone in Austin. You can see him on High School Scoreboard Live tomorrow night on Valley Sports Southwest alongside myself and Aaron Hardigan, 1030 p.m. And then you can hear him call Texas and Georgia uh, on the radio. Craig, appreciate your time, my friend, and I will see you tomorrow night. Sudden thought, Tep. When you were on my show this week, you said maybe the most important college game that I asked you for this week, other than Texas, might be Sam Houston. How about you, Tep? You, Tep! It's their first one of the season! Right. Picks up, baby. Picks up. Uh, thanks, Craig. <laughs> yeah. uh, there he goes, Craig Way.